hopefully this week we will try to finish up um, the other side of the wall and finish painting the place up. And we are hoping to start our new service by the 22nd of January. And um, once we move in and once we settle down a little bit, we will be able to do like a grand opening of new wine. This week we are also reaching out to uh, student ministries where we are inviting them to come and um, help us with worship and with a few other things. I already have a few applications for it's on. I already have a few applications for uh, for the media team. A few students reached out for media team. So we are excited about uh, bringing in um, students and you know also ministering to our community locally. Last week the Lord gave us a theme for this year not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. But by His Spirit. This year we are called to be established by His Spirit. I don't know about you, but the Lord is drawing me personally to a, a place of more, a place of more consecration where I am trying to move away from certain things, move away from, um, how do I explain? The Lord is drawing my attention more towards the Word and more towards the Spirit. What I used to like to do I haven't been doing with people. I am trying to separate myself because I believe the Lord is calling us to a higher ground. He's calling us to a place of deeper intimacy. And the more the Lord calls you to a place of deeper intimacy, the more you want to leave the affairs of men. You see, when Jesus was surrounded with a crowd of people and everybody started yelling and screaming and chanting, let us crown him, let us crown him. And Jesus spoke to his disciples, said, take the crowd to the other side. I will meet you there. And he left the place, left the crowd to go to the mountaintop. This is a great analogy. Look back in the Old Testament. Moses was called to the mountain 40 days. This guy climbed to get to the mountain twice. He stayed on the mountaintop. And when he came down, the, the glory of God was over his face. So something about God drawing you out this year from the regular things that you're involved with. And he's calling you out into a place of circumcision. Circumcision of your heart, of your mind, of your spirit. The older I am getting, the more the Lord is drawing me to a place of spirit and the word. There are so many things that I was doing until about last year and I just felt in my spirit, the Lord said, playtime is over. Now come, let me speak to you. Let me talk to you. Let me draw you to the affairs of what I have. Come to the seat. Come to my table. You see, when, when you are in time, 
You and I, we are in time. When we are in time, we are forced to split our reality in a chronological sequence. This is why we say yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That's a chronological sequence. So when you are here on earth, we are, our, our time is defined in chronological sequence. But when you come to a place of beings, of heavenly beings, there is no time. Everything there is, is not in chronological sequence. Everything there in the spirit is now. Amen? Everything there is now. I was talking to Michael yesterday as I was driving in the car and I was helping him understand this concept that in the spirit realm, when you enter into the spirit realm, there is no concept of yesterday. There is no concept of tomorrow. There is the only concept that is present there is now. This is why Jesus said, I am. He didn't say, I was. He didn't say, I will be. He said, I am. So when you come to a place in the spirit, he is. He continues to be who he is. The realm of the spirit is a very, I, I hate to use this term loosely, but it's a tricky place. If you are not anchored in the word of God, you can be lost in an ocean. Have you ever swam in an ocean before? Anyone? Have you been caught up by the wave and dragged? But if you ever did that, the ocean will take you all the way to the middle or to the furthest part away from the shore. And now you're caught yourself in the middle of an ocean, not knowing where you are. Wherever you look, it's just water everywhere. So the reality of things that we deal with in the spirit is not in the reference point of chronological sequence. It is not yesterday or tomorrow. Everything is based on reality of now. So when people, when, when people go into the spirit, you may make a mistake by judging your life by where you are standing at that moment in the spirit. You can make a mistake by, by not knowing where you're standing in the spirit. Does that make sense? So momentarily, when you leave your chronological sequence, which is time, and when you leave that sequence of time and momentarily you present yourself in the realm of the spirit, you show up at a point in the spirit where it's not yesterday and tomorrow, it is today. Everything that has been spoken is now. And if you don't enter the spirit, you cannot make progress in your daily life. Because tomorrow is now, yesterday is now, and now is now. So when you enter into the realm of the spirit, the reality of tomorrow becomes now. The reality of yesterday becomes now. Everything is presently ongoing. It's hard to understand. It's hard to understand this. Scientifically speaking, <laughs> I'm sure many of you have watched this movie, Ant-Man. Have you? Now, the, uh, what was his name, Dr. Pike? He creates a serum where you, where you can shrink yourself and then you can shrink further by pressing a button and the serum is injected and you go into a quantum realm. 
And when you enter into that quantum realm where this guy Ant-Man enters into a quantum realm, everything is just slowed down. Right? Scientifically, we are saying it is quantum realm. Because science cannot explain what spirit is. Excuse me. Hello. Science can never explain what spirit of God is. Please help me understand. Can science tell me what life is? So when you come into the realm of the spirit, everything slows down to a point where you're just floating in the spirit and you're in the spirit, you're in the realm of the spirit. Everything else, just all the noise, it shuts down. And when you are in the Spirit of God, the only thing you hear is the voice of God. You see, before we make progress in our lives, we, need, we must come back to understand what the Spirit is. What is the foundation and the reality of the Spirit of God? If you don't understand the basics of the Spirit of God and the foundation and the reality of the Spirit of God, you will go into a place of the realm of the Spirit momentarily and you receive a word, but that word was for yesterday in your reality in chronological sequence. And that, when you bring that word back, it's not applicable anymore. Right? And when you go in momentarily in the realm of the spirit, you come back and you get that word. And that word is for today, but it's not helping you for tomorrow. So that again doesn't work. Right? So when you go in the spirit and you go in momentarily and you grab a word and you come, in, you come back and you give the word. Now the word is for tomorrow, but it doesn't help you momentarily in the present. You see the conundrum. Once you understand the Spirit of God, you will learn by the voice of God in the realm of God how to receive that word and how to bring that word and apply that word in your daily life. Amen? In dealing with this reality as touching the Spirit, there are two laws that govern the operation of the realm of the Spirit. Two laws. And I'm going to share it very briefly as I continue to talk about and teach about this subject. Number one, the first reality is weaved into an economy we call the economy of intimacy. The economy of intimacy. That's the first law governing the realm of the spirit and how the exchange process takes place. It's the economy of intimacy. The second reality that is weaved in into the economy that we call the principle of the kingdom. One, intimacy. Second, is the principle of the kingdom. So the principle of the kingdom are earthly, but the foundation of that, of that principle is based on the realm of the spirit. Amen? So I'm going to try to explain a simple point until the Holy Spirit goes to work in our hearts. So I'm going to deliver this word, but I want you to allow the Spirit of God to receive this word and learn to discern this word for yourself, right? This is what maturing is. I can deliver it, but if you don't understand and receive it, that word becomes useless. Because that would be, would be something that you go back and listen to a sermon on a Sunday morning, and by the time you get out of that door, it's gone. I... I pray this morning that your hearts and your minds will be circumcised that as you hear this word that you will allow the spirit of God to receive it to the depth of your heart. Amen? Two ways. When the spirit of God goes to work in your life, there are two ways of mobilizing power in the, in the spirit of God. Two ways you can mobilize the power of the Holy Spirit is either by taking advantage by, of the economy of intimacy or by taking advantage of the economy of the principles. 
Amen? Two ways you can take advantage of the Holy Spirit. One, through the economy of intimacy. And two, through the economy of the principles of the earthly foundation. Amen? So, for a man to be complete in his manifestation, he must touch these realities of heaven and earth. If you want to be successful... If you want to wake up every morning and win, if you want to wake up every morning and, and allow the Spirit of God to manifest in you, if you want to wake up every morning, when you wake up every morning and, and when you touch these two realities and you operate from these two realities every day, you will always win. I was telling somebody this past week, I said, we are designed, we are designed to win space and time. Our bodies are designed to win space and time. And then people ask me, why do I fall sick? Why do I have all these sicknesses in my life? Why am I falling sick with seasonal sicknesses? Yes, I agree with all of these things that you're saying. But when you learn to operate from these two realities of intimacy and principle, the end result is Holy Spirit will start manifesting. The problem with us is that we have not understood or learned the dimension of God. We come so close in the spirit because of our mediocre teaching in churches. We are taught to come and prophesy. We are taught to come and speak in tongues. We are taught to, 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 to dream and to have visions. We are taught these mediocre things. But these gifts, these manifestations of these gifts are not just limited. They are unlimited. Their, their job and their function of these gifts is that you can come and reach the dimension of God. And when you reach that dimension of God, you start to transact in the economy of intimacy and principles. So, so most Christians, the reason why they are stuck and not ever come to a place of God's dimensions is, or God's reality or the Holy Spirit's manifestation is because we are stuck with the gifts. We're stuck with the gifts. We receive the gift of tongues. We receive the gift of this prophecy. And now we just go out. Oh, I want to, I can prophesy. Oh, I can speak in tongues. Mankind is a unique creature. You give him little here, they get excited. Right? We get, we get what we want, we get excited. And then we lose focus. You see, the, the work of the cross was just a stepping stone. Work of the cross was just a stepping stone so you could put your flesh on that cross. Our rightful place is not the cross. Our rightful place is at the right hand of the Father. Someone say amen. amen. If, if this word is penetrating your heart, your mouth needs to respond. You know why? Because when the word goes in, the spirit moves. And when the spirit moves, it responds. So when we learn to govern from the dimensions of God, and when we learn to transact from the economy of these two places, intimacy and principles, we start to operate. We start to manifest the Holy Spirit. If you go back and look throughout the history, there are individuals who are manifesting the Holy Spirit. There are healings taking place. There are so many signs and wonders taking place. Why are we limited to just one person doing this? God called you to be a champion. 
Imagine if 10 people from this city were to rise today in the dimension of God. We could take over the whole city for the kingdom of God. Just 10 people. A man, when a man, the only way a man can be complete in the manifestation of the Spirit of God is when he touches these two realities and economy, intimacy and principles. Let me give you a little bit more details. You see, I, I, I hope I can help you understand this a little deeper this morning, why it is important to understand the reality of who you are. If you don't understand who you are, you can never understand the dimension of God and why he created you. And if you don't know why he created you, you'll never manifest. And if you, if you won't manifest, you will never know the purpose for which God has brought you into this place. You will just be another person floating in space and time, doing your own little thing, being caught up with the affairs of men. You will be caught up with the affairs of men. And the more you get caught up with the affairs of men, politics, this, that, medical, all of these things, when we get caught up, we are not hearing the voice of God. We are not entering into the dimension of God. And when we're not entering into the dimension of God, we are not manifesting in the Spirit of God. When we are not manifesting in the Spirit of God, we do not fulfill the true destiny and purpose by which God has called you. You see, earth is an offspring of heaven. The heavens produced earth. The reality we see and know today were crystallized in the heavenlies. And you will know this to be true when you study in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4. If you will open with me to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4. The Bible said when the earth was created, the civilization of earth was created, it was said that it was grown. It was a word like it was vomited in reality in the spiritual terms. Genesis 2.4, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day of the Lord. God made the earth and the heavens. So the principles that hold the earth produces an alignment that makes the earth relevant. So long as it is aligned in the spirit, the principles that run the spirit realm is operational to the degree that is aligned to God. That means earth aligns to the spirit and the spirit aligns to God. This is why if you see in Genesis chapter 1, Bible says in verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, there's a huge difference between verse 1 and verse 2. I'm not going to go in there this morning, but the second verse says, now the earth was formless and void, but the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth. When earth aligns to the Spirit, the spirit aligns to God. Now when a man was brought into this equation of the earth, this was an intelligent design. But God put an intelligence in place when God formed man. Man was created different from every other thing that God created. Every other being that God created. Man was created to live in the spirit and in the earth at the same time. No other being, no other creature, you can look up anywhere. No other being, no other creature was created to live in the spirit and on earth 
both at the same time. If you go back and read throughout the, throughout the Bible, you'll see when the angels show up, they don't want to stay here. They just come quickly. Hey, listen, I got a word for you. Here's the word. See you later. I don't want to deal with the affairs of men. Look at animals. They can't live in the spirit. Because they were not designed to live in the spirit. So, let me explain to you this morning, just in brief, why God created and how God created, so you understand the, the reality and the structure of how God put things in place. Amen? So when God created man, the first faculty of man God created was his spirit. God created three things. First, he created the spirit. Right? The man was created and... It was his spirit, but the man was not designed to live in the spirit alone. If man was designed to live in the spirit alone, then we won't have any of these problems today that we have. <laughs> we would live, live in the spirit and call it a day and just be happy. But God created us to live in the spirit and live on earth at the same time. So therefore, our realities have changed. We have two separate realities, one from the dimension of heavenlies and one from the dimension of earthly, right? So when you see how God created, the Bible says in Genesis, if you will open with me to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, Genesis 1 and verse 26. It says... Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. The word make there is the word para in Hebrew. It means he was produced or formed out of nothing. Right? So the man came from within God and because man came from within God, it is where God dwells that man will also dwell in the spirit, right? And so when God created that man in Genesis 1.26, he was nowhere because he didn't put him anywhere. He was in the spirit. God says, let us make man in our image. So God made man. But he had to put him somewhere. And he didn't put him somewhere until he was done creating everything. A lot of times people think from, you know, theologically there's an, we, we have an error in theology when people say God said let us make man and then he created everything and he put the man and formed the dust. No, there's a huge difference right there. Theologically if you go back and read in Genesis 1.26 God created man but he didn't put him anywhere until he was done creating other things. And then in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 if you read it says, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. That's the third part, the breath of life. And man became a living being. Three parts. He created man out of nothing in the spirit. Man was there in the spirit. He was dwelling in God, inside of God. He was dwelling in the spirit of God when God created in Genesis 1.26. And when God took time from Genesis 1.26 all the way through Genesis 2 and verse 7. And in verse 7 God says, now that I've done with creating the rest of the things, now let me come back and take this man that I created who dwells in my spirit. Let me put him somewhere. So the second part was that God put together, a form together a body made out of dust. So that was the earthly 
realm. The foundational principles that God put together on earth, those principles were formed together and God said, now I have a body. Now, the third thing that came into existence was the, the collaboration or the convergence of the spirit and the body. And when that convergence took place in Genesis 2-7, there came a soul that was the third active ingredient, which is what we call in theology a trichotomy. Body, soul, and spirit. So the spirit of God created man in the spirit and man dwelled in God in the spirit and God took that man and placed him in the principle of the earthly realm through dust and when that convergence took place, there came soul. That was the third part. The man became a living soul. So the living soul, what we say in our body, we have a soul. This living soul that you carry in your body, in your spirit, this is a bridge between the earthly and the heavenly realm. Because it is the convergence of the spirit and the principle and foundation. Therefore, you see, when we transact, in the economy of the kingdom of God, this is why in the realm of the spirit, we have to learn to transact as a spirit. We have to transact in intimacy. And then through the earthly, we have to learn to transact in the economy of the principles of the foundation of the earth. So when a soul comes in play, the soul is what Bridges the gap between intimacy and principles. Can I hear an amen? amen? Took me a while to explain, but I hope you understand. These are the realities. These are the truth that are not taught. So when you see a soul, this is why you as a soul, as a person, Without a soul, you know, you cannot make an impact in this world. As a soul makes an impact because you carry the reality of the intimacy of the spirit and you carry the principles of the foundations of the earth, the dust. And that convergence is what creates a soul and that soul makes an impact. This is why wherever you go, what you say, how you say to people, the words that you use to people, the negativeness that you use, the positive words that you use make an impact on people. When you use loose words, they make an impact. When you form your words, they make an impact. And that impact that you make on people leaves a blueprint behind or leaves an impact behind on people. Animals run on one life. But this man is a strange creature. In Genesis 2.9, if you read this morning, Genesis 2, 9, it says, And out of the ground the Lord made every tree, uh, every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If man touched that life, he begins to live like a God in this realm. When you begin to come to the realm of God and when you learn to transact through the intimacy, which is the economy of the spirit, you, you go in the intimacy of God by faith. You transact. And when you come to that place of intimacy with God, the Holy Spirit is activated in your life. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit just activates 
whatever you say, the Lord will just continue doing. Whatever you speak, the Lord will respond. Whatever you say, God will answer. Elijah stood on the mountaintop and said, let it rain. He didn't ask God, he just proclaimed from the place of intimacy. And through the principles of this kingdom, he commanded. And it happened. Jesus said, be healed. Happened. Activation of that spirit, of the Holy Spirit in your life, through intimacy is the key. You see, the natural life that you live, which is from the dust of the earth, which, is, which is, can be found in the blood, in Leviticus chapter 17 and 11, it says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Right? So the blood is a soulish life. And his breath that is inside, he breathed into this man and the man became a living soul. So for a man to function correctly, he must be planted in the spirit through intimacy and he must be planted in the earthly realm through principles which are the foundations of the earth and not any other rock. So the foundations of the earth are lost, the principles, and any man who is not planted in the principles cannot dominate this realm. I'll give you an example. Many people on this planet are, are billionaires, right? They are, uh, you know, they have so many non-profits. They are, they're doing so many good things in this world. But they are living a soulish life. Why? Because they are not connected into the realm of God through intimacy. They are only transacting through the economy of the principles of this world. And they are making impact. So you can make an impact in this world just by living a soulish life. You follow the principles of this earth and you will make an impact. But if you truly want to make an impact for generations, for eternity, you have to learn to transact through the transactions of intimacy and principle together. That is when the activation of the Holy Spirit takes place in your life. Is that making sense? So when a man wants to make progress in his life, he needs to form or formulate this alignment accurately. When you form an alignment accurately in the spirit, on the earth, a man can have victory in his life. The reason why you are not victorious in your life is because you're not aligning yourself every day. When you align yourself to the economy of intimacy and when you align yourself to the economy of principles, only then the Holy Spirit is activated. And when the Holy Spirit is activated, let me tell you something. I'm going to be in trouble, but that's okay. Even though you don't speak in tongues. Even though you don't dream and have visions. When you're aligned in intimacy and on principles in the realm of God, you will make an impact. You will live a victorious life. You will start producing for God what God has destined for you. There are, there are people, let me, I'll try to form this and continue teaching more on this. There are people today 
that live by principles alone. But when a mystery is concocted in their lives, the spiritual cuts off. The spiritual cuts them off because they are just functional by the principles. And then they lose track of things, right? And then there are people today that live by the Spirit and they, they live by the Spirit alone. And even though they are highly spiritual like Lazarus, they fail in life. They fail in life. There's a power that is activated through intimacy and there is a power that is activated into the realm of the Spirit. And by activating principles, both power and the power of the Holy Spirit works through you. So when, in, in life when you truly want to win and be victorious, you must activate intimacy. When you want to see Holy Spirit work in your life, you must activate principle. A man without principle is failure. I tell this all the time. A man who does not have principles is a failure. You have to have principles in your life. If you don't live by certain set of principles in your life, you have no focus. You have no goals. You have no path to follow. Principles allow you to walk in a certain path. Without your moral principles, your moral compass is whacked. Am I right or am I right? Right? When people don't have moral principles, they do extreme things. This is where John 10.10 10 comes. This is where the enemy comes to such people who have no moral principle. The devil said, uh, the Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil comes to such people who have no moral compass and he uses them to steal, kill, and destroy. By my spirit is not a scripture to quote lightly. By my spirit is a protocol. The protocol of intimacy that mobilizes the Holy Spirit in your life. From heaven and from earth. It mobilizes a spirit in you. Every man you see that is invincible today knows how to mobilize these two dimensions of power. There are many Christians in churches today that have been in churches for many years, many years, but they know nothing about intimacy. Absolutely nothing about intimacy. The spirit realm is alien to them. So when demons want to come in their personal life, they can easily mess with them. A little change in their life will rile them up because they are not grounded on the foundations. When the mountains show up, they don't know how to overcome these mountains. They don't know how to make spiritual progress in their lives. But they've been in churches all their lives. 30 years, 40 years, they, they've been in church. They call themselves Christian. But the concept of the realm of the spirit is completely alien to them. And then there are men in churches today. Men and women both. Who are in churches today, they have no principles. Absolutely no principle. They come to church, they fellowship with you, but when they leave the church, their entire life is different. Their whole life living 
from a place of sin and operating from the place of sin. When they come to church, thou art holy. You see men and women walk in with, you know, women come in with a holy catwalk. But they have no principles. The minute they leave church, it's party life. It's party central. They become vulnerable to the spirits and to the demons. And these spirits come and shake the foundations in them. And then they cause them to compromise their destiny. You remember that story of that guy, the older brother that gave away his inheritance. You know what was his name? For a bowl of soup. Come on now. Where's my church people? <laughs> Jacob's older brother, who was a good hunter. No. You see, this guy gave away his inheritance just for a bowl of soup. He gave away his blessings for a bowl of soup. This is how men and women are in the church today. When these demons show up, they give away their inheritance, their blessings. They get compromised because they don't have principles in their lives. A little compromise kicks them out of their destiny that God has for them. And they are wondering, God, where are you? Where are you? Why have you abandoned me? But if they ever come to the realm of the the, the, in the, the realm of God, God is sitting on his throne and saying, I am on my throne. Where do you think I am? The power is in the spirit activated by intimacy and the power that is in earth is activated by principle. Whichever you want, you need to activate those things and operate from that place. By my spirit is life. By my spirit is a protocol. By my spirit is an ordinance in the spiritual. Next week, I want to drive and explain the two things that happen when you want to mobilize the power of the Holy Spirit through intimacy. We're going to go deeper. Right? I explained this morning about two economies by which we transact one there are two realms one is through the heavenlies through the through the through the spirit and two through the earthly realm for in the spirit we transact with we transact with what come on we transact with what intimacy right the second in the earthly realm we transact with what principles right in the coming week, I'm going to talk about how things function through intimacy. How our life can operate through intimacy in the realm of the spirit. And I'm going to define that. And as, as I define that, I will also define how to operate in the realm of earthly through principles. Amos, the book of Amos says, let your words be few for our God is in heaven. This year, I want to challenge you, each one of you, whether you're present here or you're present online and watching our live stream, thank you for taking the time listening to us this morning. If you're watching this morning, at some point when you come across this YouTube video and watch it, please hear me out. I want to challenge you this morning. May this year you will ground yourself in these two realities. 
of transacting in the economy of intimacy and transacting in the economy of the principles from earthly realm. I want to challenge you to use your words wisely. Because you never know how the Holy Spirit wants to manifest through you. When you allow the Spirit of God to manifest through you, you have to learn to be more discerning of what to say, how to say. Little children always are having fun and making fun. But when we grow up to be adults, we have to learn to discern. We have to learn to discern of what to say. And especially we have to learn to discern because now we operate through the Holy Spirit. We do not want to grieve the Spirit of God in our lives. You're called to operate in your destiny. Don't let little things kick you out of the destiny of God that God has for you. It's so easy to get kicked out and, and be disaligned. You cannot move mountains unless you have a spirit. You cannot, you, you'll, you'll be flooded away when winds and waves come through unless you're standing on the foundation of his word. You'll be sifted when these, spirits, when these demons show up and these spirits show up. You'll be sifted away if you're not standing and aligned in the Holy Spirit. So this year is a year for call to action. And that call to action is not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. So as we continue to learn his word deeper, may the intimacy be formed in the spirit and may the principles be formed in the earthly realm so that the, the bridge, which is your soul, will be, will be a convergence point of the Holy Spirit so that you can operate and transact with intimacy and principles this year. Amen? Let's pray. Father, Lord, we come before you this morning. We thank you for this word. May we ask this morning that may your word mobilize in our heart. May it churn and activate your Holy Spirit. To everyone that is hearing this morning this word and to everyone who, who's at the sound of my voice, to anyone that is being disaligned this morning spiritually, to anyone that has been disaligned in the spirit and in principle and intimacy, I ask for an alignment this morning, Lord. I ask for an alignment this morning that you would align us, Lord, in the intimacy of your spirit, that you will align us in principles this morning, that as we come before you and transact before you, Lord, in intimacy, and in principles that your Holy Spirit will be activated. We are called to do great things. We're called to do great things. We're called to be champions. We're called to be champions. We're called to inherit the DNA of our Father, Jesus Christ. We're called to inherit. Inherit that eternal DNA and to operate from that place. So Lord, we ask that you allow us to come in alignment to your spirit, to come in alignment 
to what you have for us. The destiny that you have set before us. We ask for alignment this morning. Lord, we repent of our words. We repent of the way we have done things. We repent of our theology. We repent of our old ways. This year, Lord, challenge us to read your word every day and to dig deeper and to come to a place of intimacy. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen.